This is a response to Boat 6868's question regarding outsourcing one or two positions. Is it viable? And what's the sort of cost involved? So the first thing is cost. Cost starts at $5 an hour. Won't go any lower than that, I'll be honest with you. If you just want a sales agent, then you're still talking $5 an hour. I know some people go, but I've seen people do it for three fifty. Yes, you have. And it's the same reason that six of my agents were worth 40 at another call center because we produce higher caliber sales and also we have a higher conversion rate. So it's what you, you get what you pay for. It's like that freelancer and all that. I don't even go on those things. I do use Fiverr though because a lot of the people on Fiverr are actually specific tasks. You know, um, for example, voiceovers and things. You'll get radio people and stuff do on there for a bit of uh, publicity so you can get some good people on Fiverr. Would I get my accounting done on Fiverr? The answer is no. Would, would I get somebody to do a graphic of my face on Fiverr? The answer is yes because for five dollars why not? I mean we sit in messing around with uh, Photoshop and uh, Adobe Illustrator for two days trying to work out how to use the thing um, to get a comic effect for example five dollars a lot cheaper so, task-based stuff, I recommend Fiverr for some of it. Um, it's very quick and easy to do. But for $5, you can have your own person, virtual assistant, accountant, receptionist, whatever you want them to be. Starts at $5 an hour. The only reason it does go up is if you're asking them to do specialist accounting software. So the first question I would ask you is what software do you use and also what software does your accountant like because if you're exporting to a suit an accountant it might be worth you converting to what the accountant wants in the first place and then we'll train somebody to suit that or find somebody who does it so that's that's the first priority if you're looking at accounting is the software because people need to be trained in that specifically unless you're doing it all in Excel then it's just getting used to your spreadsheets and what you're actually doing the reason it goes higher is because of training costs. For example, if I put um, Bob, Bob who's down in Naga, onto graphics work, he would be at least seven dollars an hour. Um, Bob can design, build, and encode websites as well as code. Literally, um, he does soundboards and stuff for me. Um, if you don't know what a soundboard is, if you Google Simpson soundboard, you'll see what a soundboard is. It's where you basically click a button and it says something. Um, they're sometimes used in call centers for uh, automated responses so that they'll hear the person on the phone say, I'm not interested, for example, and they're talking to a soundboard. They're actually talking to the person. But that's another thing. So the point is, they start at $5 an hour. Now the next question is, is it worth employing one or two people over 15? One or two, I recommend highly. Employing 15, not unless you know what you're doing and what you're buying, because this is where a lot of call centers go wrong. If you're doing telemarketing, telesales, I recommend start with five. Don't go for 35, don't go for 45, etc. because what happens is the first days, you're learning the product, you're learning the, um, what's acceptable because sometimes people want hardcore selling some people like soft selling so some people want it rammed down somebody's throat for you to sell it and other people want you to just inquire if they're interested or not and not upset them because you might send somebody around on the door in that week if you can get an idea of what they're really looking for so you start with five people on telemarketing telesales accounting and CAD or um, Excel processing, even data input, I recommend starting with smaller numbers. Now, I know a lot of people go, oh, well, we do 50 people or whatever. Yes, but I prefer to start with a few, get a 100% right, because you got to bear in mind, I don't know you or a business yet, so once I understand it, it's easy for me to replicate. So if I've got one or two people that are working on your projects and you've got other people already working on there they can absorb the information 
and then it starts spreading out. It's the same as I do with telemarketing and telesales. I start off with five to six agents on a specific contract, and then they will then split and have somebody next to them that is new, and then it splits again and splits again until, well, I say we've got about 45 people on one contract because the I, the main thing for me is keeping the standards up because everyone goes, oh, the standards are terrible. That's because you didn't run the business properly because that's not how telemarketing tells us. So you don't go, here it is, off you go, go and sell. Um, that's not how it works. It's a lot. It's the way a lot of people think it works, but it's actually not anywhere near that because you need that crossover of information. So, yes, highly recommend one or two to start with, especially on accounting because one or two people, you get used to each other, you build that relationship up. And over a period of time, they actually help you and you help them. So, yes, because when you've got 15 people and you're trying to go, why have we done this? This doesn't look right. or Because sometimes people put, you know, my accounts, a lot of it's in my head. I, I'm terrible for it. That's why I have Eileen do a lot of stuff for me. Um, because I, I like having... It's like my wife, she'll tell me to shut up and stuff sometimes because I'm quite strong-willed and quick to do stuff. I'm always very quick, um, which is why when I'm teaching people, she'll say, start, write it down, which is why YouTube videos are very good for transferring knowledge, by the way. You could do this sort of speech like I'm doing here, saying, well, this is how we do our accounts. Have a look at this. Do this. Do that, do that. And then you send it to them get them to look at that before they even speak to you and then I'll have a chat with them they'll go Matt I have a few questions after looking at this I haven't seen this type of spreadsheet before what does this mean etc so when we have the meeting there's already a set platform where we're going to go okay well here's the questions off the bat and then we take it forward from there now the other side of this which is why Eileen is quite important because I, Eileen is my office manager. Um, I know she's went and had a child and currently at college at the minute. But the the point being is she's a very smart smart woman. Um, but when I'm working in the UK, because this will come into the accounting, you see what I'm talking about in a minute. I get tied up because my minimum my minimum week is normally 55 hours. Um, this is one of the reasons I left that company I was working for because I'm doing 55 hours working Normally 10 to 12 hours traveling and then on Saturday because they'll email you on a Friday night Can you just have a look at this over the weekend ready for Monday? Uh, oh We should have told you during the week, but can you go to Cardiff on Monday? Sounds easy enough except you've got a hotel and everything to book and on, on a Friday night when you've just got home at 10 o'clock at night, um, bear in mind the twats that send me this stuff have bloody been at home all week. Um, I'll say we're getting argumentative on that one. Uh, but the, the point being is Eileen will deal with a lot of this stuff for me. So these idiots send me emails that, for stuff they've already had for about two or three weeks. So they know like a project's coming up in Cardiff, but wouldn't tell you because I don't know. It's a, they're so disorganized, it's hard to say. But the the point being is they'll tell you on a Friday night because they, oh, I should have said that Matt, we need Matt to go there for Monday. So she, she'll read my emails. She will then go through my emails and go, right, where's Matt going on Monday? Oh, he needs to be in this location, right, where's the nearest hotel, she'll book the hotel, is there parking, is it easier to get there by train, because like central London I always go by train, so she will go, okay, I booked your train, leaving Worcester at 7am or 6am, arriving at London or whatever, because she'll do it whatever the, the email said about appointment times, so she'll deal with that, she'll deal with the hotel, she'll deal with the parking, she'll deal with the clearance, because most of these contracts, although they'll go, be there for Monday, they don't tell the people on the site. So what Eileen will do is she'll ping them an email over and says, hi, 
just to let you know I'm coming down on Monday. Um, I believe you're aware because XYZ said that there'd be discussions with whoever um, and I've arranged this because a lot of time it's directors talking and then they don't tell their own people and they don't tell me to the last minute either so they just assume everybody knows because everybody's telepathic but the point being is Eileen will preempt things by sending that email over and then what happens is sometimes they'll go, you do realise this is a government establishment and you need a minimum of two weeks notice, no you can't come on Monday. Which then means that they've got to go and cancel everything as well. Normally the email is ahead of booking everything else. But you do get that. And it only comes from having a well organised PA dealing with all that stuff because when I'm busy I'm really busy uh, sorting problems out on contracts. That is that stuff. When I'm going back to Spain to see my wife and kids, which is something the company does not understand what family life is because they don't actually do a real job. Um, they, I find it difficult to get time to even book tickets for that. So Eileen will book the flights for me. She also, you know, she'll deal with some of the family side of stuff that. I might be struggling to get time to do because when I'm busy, I'm busy. Um, which is why I do chunks of work. I do three, four months solid and then that's it. I don't want to know for probably three, four months after that. I'm on a downtime. I'm taking time off. I'm not interested in the next project, etc. Because now it's family time. But either way, Eileen will deal with that. So from a small business point of view, because it works just as well, when you're in the car, and on the way to a sales appointment, Eileen could be the person that's phoning ahead to let people know you're on your way, you'll be there in 20 minutes. Because how many times have you been in meetings and people haven't turned up? Or, oh, I forgot you were coming, um, just headed off to get dog food or whatever, I'll be gone an hour. Whatever it is, the, the PA, BA, personal assistant, virtual assistant, can actually fill in some of these tasks for you. The easiest way of working out what a person to do for you is getting a little notepad and go through stuff that eats your time up. Um, is it answering the phone? Can you transfer the calls there? And she sits there and filters the calls for you. She, so you only get the calls that are important. Does she deal with your calls while you're driving? Because in the UK, using this mobile phone, even if it's switched on, they're trying to get to the point where they can arrest you for it for not being in due care, uh, not having due care and attention in control of a vehicle, just by it being switched on. That's how stupid it is. Doesn't matter if it's in the boot of the car, it, it was still switched on because they look for a mobile phone if you're in an accident. It's the first thing they're looking for these days, and they're checking to see if you called anybody or whatever. Um, and doesn't matter if it's hands free either, by the way. So what I do is I put this phone onto uh, call forwarding, goes to the Philippines by Skype, Eileen answers the calls, she then texts me back on this phone which is switched off and then I'll pull off the motorway services and I'll answer the phones because like I'm going from say Worcester to Edinburgh, it's a six hour journey so every couple of hours I'll stop and just check my phone and if I know there's an important call that morning I'll check it every half hour for example, I'll go on and off the motorway um, I know it's, it seems a bit excessive, but I need my driving license. So the idiot laws in the UK are getting a bit crazy. Um, but the, the reason being is mobile phones are the biggest cause of death at the moment, um, which is why they made a priority. The problem is the police go excessive. They, they, they go from common sense to madness. But either way, that's nothing to do with this. The whole point is the calls are diverted. What will happen is Eileen will get the call, find out what it is. She's also dealing with my emails and at the same time. She'll then text me on here, say, John, John called the 1245 or John emailed the 1245. He hasn't a problem with X, Y, Z. Can you give him a call back as soon as you get this message? And leaves a telephone number on there. So those tasks are things people can do for you and it may not seem that important 
until you actually hit on a big sale or something because you've got a very reliable and conscientious virtual assistant. So I know we're saying accounting, if your accounting is only going to be like say four hours a day or something, have a think, is there more work for them? Because what you're trying to do is actually keep them busy. If, you, if they've got plenty of work on, it means you've got more time to develop your business. And that's the way I always look at it. That's why I say, you know, Eileen, I pay cash. I pay out my salary when I work for this company that I am now refusing to work for. Um, because it's it gives me the most important thing back on this planet to a human being. It's time. She's giving me some of my life back. So you can't buy that. <laughs> so having somebody sit there and do... My time sheets, my mileage sheets, my um, booking hours of where I'm going, etc., uh, hotels, rail, parking, etc. It gives me my Saturday back, but during the week, it also prevents me getting in trouble with the law for a, either using my mobile phone or me turning up to a contract after driving two and a half hours to find that nobody's there. So that's what I'm saying. If you're thinking accounting. Think of a few other things, because it, it's not just as straightforward as, okay, we'll just get to do the accounts, because you might find, right, okay, well, even when you're doing the accounts, can I transfer my calls to you anyway? Yes, of course you can. Just because somebody's doing your accounts in the Philippines, they can still answer the phone for you if you transfer it, because you're paying for those hours. They're working for you. So if they can do both, I'm not going to charge you extra for somebody answering the phone. It's $5 an hour, and we won't go any cheaper. Before anybody says, well, I want to haggle. No. Um, the reason is we invest in training, we invest in people, we invest in things like healthcare and things like that. So even, it, even with um, the building we have, it's, it's a much nicer place than a lot of other bigger places because we spend a fair bit of money on our property because A, we own it, but B, we want an environment that we want to work in and that's what we aim for, a happy working environment. All right, thanks for watching.